everybody and welcome back to the Garden Railway. Um, this is March 2017 so I think this has been a long time coming this update so this will probably be the March update for the month. Um, lots and lots and lots to talk about this time. Um, very excited lots and lots going on. So um, first of all I'll just show you what I've been doing here if you remember uh, how the layout went, this was the curve here and this was all backfilled with soil and pretty much doing nothing. I've cut some of that back and I've dug the whole thing out and concreted a new base in there. Um, this is going to be, if you look up there, on a raised track bed the tracks not that's just loose on there at the moment um, just to add some more interest what's going to happen here is this will be a tunnel that will just go to nowhere it's kind of um, just a, a, a you know a terminus for this railway going inside a tunnel and then disappearing and that also comes back around this way and off in that direction where I've removed all the back let me come up here I've removed all the back of the rocks all the planted area here and the concrete base has gone down there because this is the location for the castle so in effect I've laid the footings or at least the foundation section for the castle and that's going to go right across here and down here. There'll be a tunnel portal there that actually goes into the castle, underneath the castle. And then this extra track, which is just going to be another kind of terminus. Another tunnel there, a few, let's say a metre of track. But I do have an idea. Um, to have something on a shuttle mode running backwards and forwards through there uh, I need to build something maybe you know I'd like to see a, a, a simplex a, a, a small simplex with with a couple of carts or something you know just to and froing every few minutes or so to uh, just to add some interest while the trains are running round. I've relayed this piece of track here you can see uh, the straight used to go to there and then there was a curve which was still quite good but there was always that pinch so what I've done is I've made them really big radius curves so the curves actually where are we the curve starts back here now it's much more gentle it goes right the way around to there and the same thing in the going into the tunnel that curve is now wider and I have a, a full straight section that actually runs through there so I'm going to do a little bit more work on the other side to graduate that and hopefully that will take out that pinch that I was getting there okay uh, well as I mentioned before this is where the second track is going to go that's why I've started to kill this area off so I haven't got so much uh, gardening to do just uh, lay some weed fabric down excuse me what do I have there the white balance um, and then that's going to go off all around the garden but I'll do more on that in another update what should I just quickly say while I'm here oh yes the planting these look at these uh, heathers three pounds each 16 of them 48 pounds I had a deal and I got the whole lot for three pounds <laughs> 20 pence a plant it's worth asking some more of those little trees I've got some uh, thyme there now the baby's tears that really is there's some more in there I'm just trying to grow some of that on more baby's tears in there heathers this is some more sedum, sedum like I've, the same as I've got in the rocks, this is a slightly different variety. Uh, what is that? A flowering shrub, I've cut the flowers off. There's the uh, baby blue stars, 
I mean, look, you can see what happens to this. You just take a piece of it and plant it. I'll give you a look, a sense of scale. Look. Now, so that is the gardener's railway. Uh, the the how would you say <laughs> the garden railway is scenic scatter. There's loads in here. Look, it's really going lovely, and that's not even. I got that late in the season last year, so it's. It hasn't had a, a good spring time yet to, uh, to really get going. So anyway, look, lots of plants and things. And the idea is that when I do the second track, it's not going to run alongside this one. It's going to be completely separate. And there'll be a, a fair distance between the two. And that will allow me to put the trees and bushes and things and really kind of blend the whole railway into the garden and... Uh, give it that kind of countryside feel that I'm looking for. Okay. okay, something I'm very excited about that I wanted to show you and that is this. I finally got uh, a Deltang remote control for the Garden Railway. This is the uh, the Yatton model engineering version but it's essentially a Deltang inside there and that means that pretty much all the Deltang uh, receiver circuitry, the chips are compatible with this and I have one wired in to number three, very crudely <laughs> wired in but um, let's just show you how the control is on there, look now this has got an inertia control on here turn the inertia on and then turn the power on, watch right there, wait 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 wait, come back, come back, come back right, we'll put that on 50% right now the power is on. I'm not touching it, look. And then power off. And it slows down. Ready? Look. Look at that. It's fantastic. And then off. Come back again. And off. very very pleased with that I mean that gives me a much better range of control I'm going to fit these um, that's the chip the receiver there they come I think they come in different um, with different levels of capability this one is a standard one I it came as a as a set with the controller and one of those receivers. It was um, 110. T got it for me for my birthday uh, from eBay. But I shall be seeing. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with G. Rick, the Peckerton Light Railway, but um, he has uh, a company RC Trains, and they deal with these. So I shall be. I've spoken to him. I shall be buying all my. Uh, future chips from him this can run up to 12 locos you can run 12 locos and that was what I was saying about having something come back over here having something running in a shuttle mode those receivers can do that and you can set the time to go from 10 seconds up to something like a minute you put a magnet in each end of the track and then when the when the, the loco gets to the magnet it stops waits until the time you've, uh, you've, you've set it to and then it will go again so that's the idea behind that so I've picked up some more track in here there are 12 curves now I generally don't pay more than one pound each when I'm buying these so uh, that was something like 
I think it came to about thirteen pound with the with the post. It came to about ten a tenner. Uh, but then, da 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 da. <laughs> I couldn't resist this. Um, I've already taken plenty of this out for that section out there. Um, what was in here? 40, 40 curves, um, 40 straights, some points. Um, I think there's a couple of crossovers in there. Got some new points as well. You know what? People charge 20 odd pounds for these sometimes. You can buy them. They're eight, eight pounds or something from uh, Playmobil, brand new. So, I think I've got enough track <laughs> with these, and I still, I still have some more. I still have a, another box somewhere. So, oh yes, up, up, down in the shed, I've got uh, what have I got? Forty curves. <laughs> got eighty. No, I've got about a hundred curves. <laughs> I think I used about forty to do all that. So, anyway, you know, I've got it now, so I'm happy. Right, on to something else. Okay, these are the short wheelbase LGB coaches. I had two green ones and then I bought a red one recently. Um, the same thing, the red one I bought recently was around £20. I think I paid 25 for these. I'm not sure how much they are new, but with all respect, and I mean this sincerely, I was never really keen on the colours. I found them a little bit too plasticky. So anyway, I thought... I didn't mind getting a red one because I knew they were going to be sprayed up anyway. So I thought long and hard about the colour schemes and then I just thought, well, black. Let's try black. So they had a, a coat, a couple of coats of grey undercoat, grey uh, primer first, and then a couple of coats of matte black. Then the roofs are finished with the two coats of matte black and the bodies are... As you can see that very well, gloss black. And I removed the um, the iron work and these handles here and made them brass work or at least iron work that's painted gold. I quite like that. I think they look really nice. And you know, they're different. I saw um, a narrow gauge railway in Ireland had similar livery in the 1920s and 30s so um, I don't know I thought I'd give it a try we'll see how it looks um, <laughs> if it doesn't work then I'm gonna be in trouble because you know uh, trying to get away from black once you started but um, I'm, I'm pleased with them I really like them actually I'm looking forward to running these I'm gonna put the glazing in them and some interior uh, detail and lights so that's them. Hopefully they'll be up and running very soon. I've been doing some work on number three. And let me just show you this. Clips off. That's the way you're supposed to change the batteries in these things. That's an absolute nightmare. This button at the front here lifts the whole top off much easier. Now, these being Spremburgers, they have the, um, the visors coming out over the front so I've actually cut them off and made the openings more round because I managed to find some brass uh, window fittings that go on there can you see that? they uh, they're round on this side and then on the other side there there's a groove where I can actually fit them in. I'm just trying to, you know, it's a Spremberger but I thought perhaps I'll just try to make this one look perhaps a little bit more British or, you know, just mix it up a bit to try things out. Um, they are, of course, one of my... These curtain brass 
curtain rings, one pound. There you go, windows. Two front and back, two pound. <laughs> I also picked up a bag of wheels. Now, these came on one of those uh, ones that I bought, one of those small coaches that I bought from eBay. They are lovely, they are metal wheels. That's the only pair of actual metal axles that I've got. But in here, I think I paid about £10, and there's, I think, a dozen sets of wheels. So I've swapped, I will be swapping those two metal ones. I'll put the plastic ones back on those coaches. And you may recognise this. This is uh, one of the new Kida coaches. They strip down very, very easily. You can see there's the green colour from before. Um, just had a couple of coats of grey primer. It actually brings out some of the detail there. Yeah, I mean, it's a very simple um, affair to dismantle. A couple of screws for the bogies. A couple more for the to actually take the undercarriage off. Uh, the seats clip out and the um, the glazing just pushes pushes out with the seats really really simple quite surprising actually so yeah a very very simple piece to spray the problem is is that I don't know which color to choose at the moment and I think it's looking like I'm going to go back with a similar green to what we had before, or or um, a very very dark burgundy. Now, what's happened here? Um, I wasn't happy with some of the work that I'd done on this, so I went back uh, to to do some some more filling and just tidying up. And then I ended up rubbing it down and giving it a couple more grey primers again. So I lost the original burgundy. Went down to the to the spray shop to pick up some more of the burgundy, and it's been discontinued. So you can see this. <laughs> um, I bought the one that was next to it. What can go wrong? But. Uh, <laughs> It's actually very, a very loud, bright, this is a red wine colour. It's not really what I had in mind. So I'm not sure whether this is a disaster or a happy accident, but for now, I'm going to keep it. Because I've done all the spraying and at least it's kind of, I don't know, it's... Makes it even more individual, I guess. So, just for fun, this is red wine. I can't call him red wine. My favourite red wine is Casalero del Diablo. So, <laughs> this is Diablo. Hope that doesn't offend anybody. <laughs> so, Diablo, yeah. There you go. Still got the the front end to finish on this. I haven't done much apart from the spray. I need to build the um, the bigger buffer beam and the bigger buffers on there. Grill on the back, same thing with the buffers and glazing and then that's that's done. I'm actually look like Darth Vader toying with the idea of getting inside, I mean, the, these are notoriously difficult uh, to get into. Playmobil toys are very, very sturdy, you know. They're not made to unclip apart very easily, but I would like to put the RC, I mean, this is it's a lovely machine. But the um, the RC, you know, you know, the same thing. There's no, it's it's the stop and the start. It's just so 
sharp the running so I would like to try it but um, it, it, it will be one of those days when I feel extremely brave because I would hate to ruin this but um, I think I may have to in the end well I think that's all for now uh, thanks for listening thanks for your patience hope you enjoyed the update and the next one hopefully I'll have some trains running okay bye for now all the best take care